Let's get into the quarterback position. It's obviously a hot topic. It's going to get better and better as we go. Tight ends, obviously the lowest on the totem pole, so I figured I'd start there. But let's move to quarterbacks. Some honorable mentions. All right, this is going to get a little, a little, uh, you know, convoluted here. So some honorable mention landing spots. Obviously, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got a second round pick, Kyle Trask, from a few years ago. I really like. I had Kyle Trask rank higher than uh, Zach Wilson in my ranking. Zach Wilson wasn't even a top five quarterback in his his draft year for me. Um, and I want to see him get a shot. We'll see, you know, Baker Mayfield obviously comes in. He's still only 28 years old. So realistically, Baker Mayfield could be the quarterback in Tampa Bay for the next six years. Uh, I'm not, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But I mean, again, it's an honorable mention. Uh, you know, if, if a third round quarterback goes here, you know, if a guy like Hendon Hooker goes here, then that's a guy to keep your eye on for sure. But again, that's why it's an honorable mention. It didn't make the top five. The Jets, I only have them on here as like a caveat if they don't get Aaron Rodgers. And in a dynasty format, even if they do, I might take a sprinkle on if they draft a guy in the fifth round, you know, like a Clayton Toon, something like that. Jake Hayner, one of those types of guys later on in the draft. Uh, Stetson Bennett, whatever. I might take a shot in a dynasty format, even if they get Aaron Rodgers. So again, it's a caveat that they may or may not get uh, A-Rod. And then, you know, even in a dynasty format, there might still be some small value there, just a complete scratch off ticket and see what happens. Uh, I put the Atlanta Falcons as an honorable mention. I'm a, just a big believer in Desmond Ritter. I think they're going to give him a shot. You might as well see what you got, at least for this season. I think uh, he showed enough last year. He showed enough in college. I thought he should have been drafted way higher than he did in his draft year, but it, it is what it is. And he should have the weapons. We'll see what the, the Falcons end up doing in the draft. I think that they absolutely get another slot, another receiver and a slot receiver and uh, keep your eyes out for my mock draft. That'll come out on Monday. I'll schedule that in pretty soon. So that'll be a live one as well. Um, yeah, that that's definitely a spot that I think uh, uh, there it's an honorable mention. Cause if, again, if it's, it's, if it's a Hendon hooker, Someone like that, he's going to be the ultimate name thrown out there, left, right, and center, that uh, if he goes to X team, he's a guy to keep an eye on. So honorable mentions, there you go. Uh, let me know what you think about those guys. But let's jump into the top five. So at five, we got the Tennessee Titans. Um, <clears throat> we'll see with Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. This, this is going to be the last year of Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee, 100, 100%. It's the last year on his contract. There's a very reasonable possibility that they either trade him or cut him before the season starts post June one, um, depending on what they do in the draft and, you know, don't sleep on it, but Lamar Jackson is some sort of still available. I think that if anything does happen with Lamar Jackson, it's going to happen after the draft that I'll say that if anything does, if anything does happen with Lamar and he moves teams, it's going to happen after the draft, in my opinion. So again, that falls in line with the Tennessee Titans post June 1. This isn't just about rookies either. This isn't 100% all about rookies. With the quarterback position, I'm throwing Lamar Jackson in here a little bit because he could be on the move still. He absolutely can be moved. And I think that there's a couple teams, this being one of them, this being one of them that, that might take a chance on, on a guy like Lamar Jackson. You give away two first-round picks next year's and the year after. You do it after this draft. I think that's a spot. But again, Hendon Hooker is a, a possibility here. We've heard Will, Will Levis, uh, CJ Stroud with the with the Vrabel connections. Um, the reason they're so low, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of talent on offense on this team besides the running back position, right? Their offensive line, in my opinion, is in a little bit of a better spot. So that's that's a boost, that's a plus. But there's really not much uh, talent for pass catchers. Trey Burks is is basically your number one. And then uh, Chigu Konku at tight end, You got he's a playmaker. But other than that, they're going to need some help on offense. So that's the biggest reason I have the Tennessee Titans so low. But again, like I said, keep an eye out for uh, the potential of Lamar Jackson moving after the draft. Moving on to number four. The number four spot for a quarterback is going to be the Houston Texans who may or may not be selecting a quarterback at number two overall. Uh, a lot of things have been starting to come out in the last few weeks here that uh, are making it seem like uh, they're not going to be taking C.J. Stroud. We'll see. In my opinion, C.J. Stroud should be the, the number one. 
selection. That's my opinion. Obviously, I know everybody knows that Bryce Young is is about 97% to go to the the Carolina Panthers and that's the way I'm looking at it right now. So if they if they do skip, you know, they don't take CJ Stroud or, you know, a guy like Hendon Hooker at 12, this is another spot I could see them taking a swing at potentially Lamar Jackson. You got the 2 and the 12 this year. They got two first round picks next year. You know, after this draft, you you restock your team with the two and the twelve, and then you draft you you uh, sign Lamar Jackson. You give up one first next year, one first the year after, you know, and then your own first. Hopefully, you get to keep. I don't know how that works if you can give somebody else's or keep your own. But regardless, either way, with Lamar Jackson, they're not picking this high. There's none of these teams are. You know, the Titans, the Houston Texans, and a couple other we'll talk about with Lamar Jackson on your team. You're not going to be picking that low. So um, that's another possibility. But we'll see what happens if uh, they do end up taking CJ Stroud. And again, keep an eye out for my mock draft. But this is a, a quality spot. Again, it's higher than the Texans because their offensive line is better. Uh, the Houston Texans offensive line is a decent spot. So any quarterback coming in, rookie or or, or uh, you know veteran, you're going you're gonna to be at least protected reasonably they they absolutely need some help on the offensive side of the ball at wide receiver Dalton Schultz is there he's a quality target you know kind of a catch and fall down tight end but you know he's good for six to eight hundred yards and six to eight touchdowns potentially but they definitely are going to need to address wide receiver in the draft and I think they do so decent decent spot here it's it's starting to get uh it's kind of starting to get real Let's move on to number three, the number three landing spot for quarterback, the Washington Commanders. I don't know if Sam Howell is it. Um, the comp for Sam Howell for me last year was Baker Mayfield. So take that for what it's worth. The offensive line is all right. It could definitely, again, use some work. This is, uh, in my opinion, this is you know, one of two spots that I think are in serious contention to go after Lamar Jackson again after the draft. They pick 16th this year. And if you put Lamar Jackson on this team, they're a hundred percent a playoff team. Any team that gets Lamar Jackson, including the Baltimore Ravens, well, they obviously weren't last year, but uh, they should be a playoff team, right? And I think the the commanders would be. They have quality targets. Um Obviously, if they do go after Lamar Jackson, they'll have to probably cut Curtis Samuel again post June 1, but that works out with the narrative I'm kind of laying out here. Uh, Scary Terry's obviously there. Jahan Dotson, last year's first round pick. They've got some talent. They've got a couple uh, tight ends that could that could uh, that can catch the ball. So this is the number three spot. I think it's a quality quality landing spot. I don't know if they draft one. Uh, again, for me, this isn't all about, it's not all about the draft. I'm including Lamar Jackson in this conversation. And I think that that's a, this is a spot that, that we could see Lamar Jackson in next year, especially with the ownership change. I think with uh, the new change with the commanders, they're going to want to win. They don't mind spending money. Let's go. Let's get a, let's get a, a playoff team put on the field this year and, and get things rolling for this franchise. So there you go. Number three, I think the, the, the commanders are a quality spot. We'll see again. I don't think they draft a guy. I really, really don't. There's been a few mocks that have a, a quarterback going at 16. I just don't particularly see it. But again, if Lamar Jackson decides to, or, or if they, you know, work out a deal with Lamar Jackson, they give next year's and the year after's first round picks after the draft. I think that uh, that makes the commanders that much better. Number two, the Indianapolis Colts. I think uh, we'll see. It seems like they're going to stick to their guns and get a, a and go for a rookie quarterback. With Gardner Minshew coming in, I think in a pinch, Gardner Minshew can get the job done. They got some quality targets with uh, Michael Pittman Jr., Alec Pierce from last year, Jelani Woods. I really like as a as a tight end. Uh, Kylan Granson, you know, Mo Ali Cox are there as well, but. Uh, quality pass catchers, quality playmakers, a decent offensive line. I think that that can still use a little bit of work. Some of those guys are a little overpaid, but uh, it is what it is. Quality enough, decent team. But it seems like they're going to stick to their guns. We'll see who's there at number four. Um, I couldn't see C.J. Stroud getting past this team at four. I would be absolutely floored. Unless, again, the, the caveat here that I'll keep mentioning, unless they think that they're getting a deal done with Lamar Jackson. And again, they pick fourth this year. If Lamar Jackson's a Colt, there's a 0% chance they're picking in the top 10 or even top 20, in my opinion. So there you go. There's another little little uh, nugget to throw in there with the Lamar Jackson wrinkle that's just kind of 
sitting on the outskirts of this draft. I think people are forgetting about it a little bit, but I think there's a, a massive potential. I'll say it again, that, that uh, Lamar Jackson signs with the team after the draft, especially some of these teams that pick a little bit higher that if you get them, you will not be picking that high next year. So let's get rid of that, that draft pick. And the year after we'll have Lamar Jackson. You should be making the playoffs the next two years. Anyways, that's at least the hope if you're spending that kind of money on Lamar Jackson. So there you go. But it's, it's the number two spot for a uh, landing spot for a quarterback with the, with the playmakers, they have the offensive line, the new coaching staff, you know, offensive minded coach. We'll see what happens. So I, I don't mind anyone that goes to the Colts, even if it is a rookie, especially, like I said, if uh, CJ Stroud lands here, I'll be even higher on CJ Stroud than I already am. I don't, I don't believe them that they have Will Levis above uh, Anthony Richardson. I really, really do not believe that. Um, there's a 0% chance that I'm picking Will Levis over uh, Anthony Richardson. Is Will Levis more ready to start an NFL game tomorrow? Absolutely. You better believe it. I'll never, I'll never say anything different than that. But I would take the chance on Anthony Richardson 100 times out of 100 over Will Levis. You know pretty much exactly what you're going to get. My comp for Will Levis, he looks a lot like Kenny Pickett to me. You know, Kenny Pickett's a quality quality quarterback, average. He's, he's good enough to get the job done. But Anthony Richardson can be Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. He could also be nothing, a complete bust and fall flat on his face. But... I'm, I'm willing to take that chance if I can get that kind of a ceiling out of the, out of the quarterback spot like that. So I don't believe them. I think that it's CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and then there's the, the wrinkle there with uh, Lamar Jackson, but we'll see how it works out. Either way, this is a very, very quality landing spot. I'm, I'm looking at uh, the Colts as the number two spot. Moving on to number one. They also have the first pick in the draft. It's the Carolina Panthers, and uh, it's going to be Bryce Young. So, I, I, I mean, this is a bit of a cop-out move for me here, but at the end of the day, this is the number one landing spot. they got a quite quality offensive line now that they shored it up last year at left tackle. Uh, they got a bunch of pass catchers that just came in. Uh, DJ Shark, obviously, uh, Hayden Hurst comes in. And then Terrace Marshall is a guy that I still believe in. You know, maybe maybe it's fool's gold, but I still believe in Terrace Marshall. And they've said publicly that they expect him to have a massive season. So take that for what it's worth. But yeah, I, I think that this is the best spot to land for a quarterback. So I, I wish it was CJ Stroud. I've been drafting my best ball teams, you know, in the big board like it was CJ Stroud back when that was the news. Uh, now that it's, you know, we're, we're, we're where we are, where we are at on April 20th, and it looks like it's going to be uh, Bryce Young, almost a hundred percent then uh, you know, Bryce, Bryce Young, it is, and we'll see how he does. I have my opinions on him, but that's another story for another day. I like CJ Stroud more. I'll tell you that right now, but it's going to be Bryce Young either way. This is, this is the number one landing spot for a quarterback.